Sarah, why are you calling so late? Our daughter should be sleeping with me. That's what Karen, my daughter-in-law, yelled when I called to ask about my granddaughter, Mary. The thing is, Mary is right next to me. It's past midnight, and it's snowing outside. Yet seven-year-old Mary arrived at my house barefoot and without shoes. What's wrong? Granny, I'm cold. Mary is shivering, her feet a painful shade of red. I quickly embrace Mary and bring her inside to warm her up in a bath. During that time, I had called Karen. I was stunned by Karen's unexpected response when I suddenly heard a voice I couldn't believe. I'm Sarah, 58 years old. I've been living alone since my husband passed away three years ago and managed the apartment complex we used to run together. I have one son, Brian, who married Karen eight years ago, and they have Mary, who just started elementary school this year. Brian's family lives just a ten-minute drive from my house, and they would often visit me, driven over by Brian. Each time, I couldn't get enough of Mary, who would cling to me and never want to leave my side. Six months ago, Brian was assigned overseas for a year. Because of Mary's schooling, he decided to go alone. Being a family man, I supported Brian's decision. However, the moment Brian left the country, Karen, who used to visit frequently, disappeared. One evening, feeling lonely without seeing Mary, I happened to pass by Brian's house. There, I spotted Mary, playing alone in the yard, still wearing her school bag. Are you alone? Where's Mom? Mom's at work, so I can't go inside. Just as Mary said, the house was locked, and she usually waits alone until Karen returns. That's when I found out that Karen, who was a stay-at-home mom, had started working. I couldn't leave Mary alone, so I took her to my house and gave her some snacks, which made her very happy. Mom gets mad if I say I want a snack, so I always hold back. I felt sorry for young Mary, who was always showing such restraint. Worried that Karen, unaware Mary was with me, might get concerned, I left a voicemail saying Mary was in my care. Later that evening, while having dinner with Mary, Karen came home. Without even a greeting, Karen entered and immediately began scolding. Mary, you can't just go to Granny's house without permission, okay? Why can't you be a good girl? Mom, I'm sorry. Mary, who had been enjoying her meal, put down her fork and looked down making me feel sorry for her. Don't blame Mary. I'm the one who brought her. I shouldn't have brought her without asking. Can we stop this? Doesn't this make me look like a bad mom? No, it doesn't. But if you're going to start working, you could have told me. I can look after Mary. With that, Karen's attitude changed abruptly. Really? Thank you. This is a big help. Yes, of course. Yay, I get to eat Granny's delicious food. Seeing Mary so joyful made me happy, but Karen's stern look when Mary complimented my cooking worried me. From the next day, Mary started coming straight to my house when Karen was at work. And when Karen came to pick up Mary after work, she began eating dinner here without any hesitation. Ugh, this tastes bland and unappetizing. Mary, you don't have to force yourself to eat. Granny's food is delicious. She didn't just heat it up in the microwave like mom. That's amazing. Mary, don't say unnecessary things. Mom is busy, unlike Granny. Let's go home. Karen left without making any eye contact, clearly in a bad mood. Mary pulled on my shirt and seemed to want to say something. What's wrong? What's wrong, Granny? Why is my mom so mad? Is it my fault? I hugged Mary, who had tear-filled eyes. No, it's not. Granny knows you're a good girl. Yeah, thanks. I'll come again. Mary waved goodbye with a big smile. From outside, I heard Karen yelling, hurrying Mary along, making me even more worried about her. From then on, Karen started dropping Mary off, even on her days off, saying, I can't relax with Mary around. She even started palming off Mary's school events on me. Karen... I can't attend the parent-teacher meeting next week. I have a community gathering. I'm sorry. Do you not find Mary cute, Sarah? 
Don't tell me you're prioritizing your own matters. Though I was annoyed at Karen's tone, I decided to skip the community gathering and attend Mary's event. And still, not a single word of thanks from Karen. So it happened one day. In the middle of a snowy night, the front doorbell rang. When I opened the door, there stood Mary, barefoot. Stunned, I asked her what had happened, but all she said was, I can't talk about it, or Mom will get mad. It's okay now. You must be cold. Let's warm you up. Mary, shivering, nodded, and I quickly bathed her and called Karen. I'm sorry to call so late, but it's about Mary. Karen cut me off with an irritated voice. Mary is sleeping next to me. Calling past 1 a.m. is incredibly rude. I have work tomorrow, so I'm hanging up. She tried to hang up, but it seemed like the call didn't disconnect. Just as I was about to end the call, I heard Karen's voice through the phone. Sorry about this. Sarah is just too noisy. It's driving me insane. You have it tough too, huh? Yeah, I do. I wish Sarah and Mary would just go away like Brian did on his solo assignment. Then I could be with you all the time. Why not divorce him? and become my wife. The condition is that you have to abandon that brat. Deal? Promise? I love you way more than I ever loved Brian. When Karen said that, I heard a suspicious voice on the other end leaving me stunned. What is she doing, neglecting her own daughter like this? Anger towards Karen boiled up inside me. I wonder how Mary has been coping all this time. I couldn't help but cry. Feeling pity for Mary. Mary had been sleep-talking, apologizing to her mom. Kara never contacted me, even the next morning, despite lying about spending time with Mary. I will never forgive her. I vowed to make Karen pay. The next day, after sending Mary to elementary school, I started gathering evidence of Karen's infidelity. I found Karen cozied up with a man near Brian's house. I secretly followed them and witnessed them entering the house. Don't you need to find the kid? She's at Sarah's place. No worries. Mary's just a hindrance. Keeps us from enjoying our time with Robert. Their conversation made my blood boil. How dare she treat her daughter Mary as an annoyance? I was disgusted, but seeing Mary's joy at being picked up from school pained me. Finally, that evening, I got a text from Karen. I've caught a cold. I don't want to pass it to Mary, so can you keep her till I'm better? I knew she was lying, but I simply replied, take care. From that day on, Mary started commuting to school from my house. Three days later, after Mary went to school, I entered Brian's house. I saw a man's coat at the entrance. I peeked through the slightly ajar bedroom door, and, as I suspected, Karen and her lover were in the bed. I started recording with my mobile phone. They didn't notice me, so I stomped over, glaring. When our eyes met, Karen screamed and hastily covered herself with the sheets. Who is this woman? Sarah! What? Nice to meet you. It seems my Karen has been relying on you quite a bit, hasn't she? Faced with an unavoidable situation, he stays silent. What are you two doing? Still standing there like that? As soon as they say this, the two of them hurriedly get dressed. Sarah, please don't tell Brian about this. Oh, why not? You're planning to leave Brian and abandon Mary to be with this guy, aren't you? I, I never said that. Playing dumb won't help you. I even have evidence. I then revealed that I had recorded the phone call Karen thought she had ended. I can't believe this. It's disgusting that you were eavesdropping. Is that all you've got to say? You are Mary's mother. And you don't even consider how she felt coming home alone. How can you not think about that? I choke back tears as I think about Mary. <clears throat> it's not Mary's fault for being gone. If you care so much about that kid, why don't you take her? Not a bad idea. Mary is very attached to Sarah. Just when I thought it was pointless to say any more to Karen, the bedroom door swung open violently. Karen, enough is enough. Brian who had been listening from outside, yells, and Karen freezes as she looks at him. Brian, why are you here? I heard about everything from Mom and flew back for this very day. Karen, you're the worst wife and mother. 
That's not true. You're misunderstanding. Really? Then explain why you neglected Mary to have an affair. I, um, Karen looks at Robert for help, but he ignores her. Come on, say something. What can I say when your husband shows up? That's it. I'm divorcing you, Karen. And you'll never see Mary again. Just give me the child support and do as you please. What? No. If that's the case, I'll take Mary. In this situation, I couldn't help but confront Karen. Karen, you don't even have a job. How are you going to raise Mary? At this, Karen begins to stammer, looking for an excuse. You quit your job to spend time with your affair, didn't you? Karen doesn't respond, but looks at Robert, who is about to leave, but is stopped by Brian. Running away when you're also responsible? Show me your ID now. Robert reluctantly hands over his license under Brian's piercing gaze. I capture it on camera, hand it back to Robert, and he rushes out. Wait, don't leave me! Left behind, Karen breaks down in tears. Karen, you need to leave this house right now. Sarah! Brian, I'm sorry. I'll never do this again. There's no way we can forgive you. I was just lonely. I don't want to hear your excuses. Brian then presented the prepared divorce papers to Karen. I couldn't just stand there watching Karen cry even more intensely. Being a mom isn't just about giving birth. Karen, you chose being a woman over being a mom. You're unfit to be a mother. What are you talking about? Sarah, your thinking is outdated. Loving your child is timeless. Well, Karen, you'll probably never get that since you see your child as an inconvenience. Karen then clung to my legs. Sarah, I'm sorry. From now on, I'll take proper care of Mary. Please forgive me. No way. It's your own fault. I pushed Karen away, and she said nothing more, hanging her head in shame. Then Karen resigned herself and filled out the divorce papers. After that, she left the house without ever coming to see Mary again. They divorced, and Brian claimed $30,000 in damages from Karen and Robert. Karen was disowned by her parents-in-law after they found out about the affair, and was even kicked out of her family home. She was also abandoned by her lover, and is now hopping from one friend's house to another. Karen has now started working a night job to pay the claimed damages in child support. Brian discussed the situation with his company and decided to quit his overseas assignment and work in America. He sold the apartment they were living in and decided to live with me. When we told Mary, she easily accepted it, saying, I won't be lonely if Dad and Granny are around. Now my life revolves around Mary, and despite the busy days, I feel happy and fulfilled. I vow to fully love Mary, who smiles more than ever, and to be her ally in any situation.